I spend an awful lot of my time helping people with layouts. I think it's 50 or 60 balls a day. And I get questions about what layouts work best for rev dominant, matched, or speed dominant bowlers. When you're talking layouts, the first thing you have to do is distinguish between symmetrical and asymmetrical balls. Asymmetrical balls have a locator pin on them and they are stronger in the mid lane. Symmetrical balls have no locator pin and no matter how you drill them when they spin on a determinator they're going to spin on the thumb hole. So there is a little less versatility with symmetrical balls now especially since the USB-C is not going to allow balance holes after August 1st of 2020. But we'll talk about both types of balls. If you are speed dominant you're going to learn to love asymmetrical balls. If you are matched or rev dominant, you get versatility in both. But keep in mind that speed dominant players need the stronger mid lane break point of the asymmetrical ball. Okay, let's talk about symmetrical balls first. With symmetrical balls, now that you're not allowed to use balance holes, or at least as of August 1st of 2020, there's two decisions you have to make. What is the pin? to PAP distance, and what is the VAL angle. The location of the CG does not matter at all because after it's drilled, the PSA is going to be in the thumb hole. When we're talking about pin to PAP distance, we're more interested in whether you are a higher track or a lower track player. Higher track players, you want pin to PAP distances between three and a half and four and a quarter inches, okay? If you happen to track a little further away from the fingers and the thumb, which means you're going to have more axis tilt, you're going to go between four and a half and five inches. That's four and a half. Okay. There we are. So three and a half to four and a half. If you're a higher track player, four and a half to five. If you're a lower track player, this is because of the amount of axis tilt you have. The ball using the four and a half to five inch pin, the pin is going to be rolling over the top of the ball as the ball goes through the mid lane and going to induce forward roll. If you use three and a half to four inches, the pin is going to be a lot closer to your axis to the axis point going down the lane and you're going to get more side roll. So side roll three and a half to four and a half, forward roll four and a quarter to five inches. So that's where you are on your pin to PAP distances. Now let's talk about VAL angles. VAL angles, which is whether the pin is close to the VAL or not, that's this distance right here, which is this angle here, will determine the sharpness of the break point. If you want a later sharper break point, you want the pin closer to your VAL, so you want a smaller VAL angle in the area of 20 to 30 degrees. If you want to see the ball read the mid lane or, and roll more forward and be more continuous off the spot, you're going to be using VAL angles of 30 to 45 degrees. So depending on your style of play, there are two different pin to PAP distances and two different VAL angles. And on symmetrical balls, the CG location means nothing because the PSA of the drilled ball is going to be in the thumb hole. So symmetrical balls are kind of simple. Pin the PAP distance and VAL angle. Here's an example of a layout for a higher track player. I'm going to put the pin three and a half inches from his PAP. I'm also going to use a smaller VAL angle, 20 degrees. I'm going to draw the VAL here. And using a standard axis point, for example, as five inches over or five and a half over by a quarter up, that would be a typical axis point for a higher track player. Okay. You're looking at a layout similar to this. Put the finger holes here. Thumb hole there, and there's the layout you're looking for. The easiest way to describe it is the pin is up 
and to the right. That's going to work great for the higher track players because that's going to give you a break point that's a little sharper and a little later down lane, which is what those people are usually craving. So for a later sharper break point, it's going to look similar to this. This is a three and a half pin to PAP, 20 degrees to the VAL. That's going to work great for a higher track player. Okay, now what I'm going to do is give you an example of a layout on a symmetrical ball for a lower track player. Problem with lower track players are they can't get the ball to read the mid lane well enough or it's a little uncontrollable on the back end. So in order to do that, we're going to go to a little bit longer pin to PAP distance. We're going to get down here to about four and a half inches. Okay? And we're going to use a little bit more VAL angle in order to soften the break point and make it a little bit more continuous. So we'll use 40 degrees. Okay? And there's your VAL angle. And there's your pin to PAP distance of four and a half inches. Okay, so a typical access point for a lower track player, and they vary considerably. Will be, let's go a half down by about four and a quarter over in that area there. Okay. So you're going to get this kind of look. Okay, it's still a pin up ball, but the pin is going to be located more over towards the center line of the grip above the fingers. Now this ball is going to read the mid lane and be more continuous, as opposed to when the pin is up here and to the right, the ball is going to push a little harder and kick a little harder on the back. Pin up and to the right for your higher track players, pin more over the fingers for your lower track players. So that's what you're going to see. Now let's talk about asymmetrical balls. This is a Katana Legend asymmetrical because it's got a locator pin. The most important factor in layouts for asymmetrical balls is the location of the lo locator pin in relation to the bowler's axis point. If you want to get the smoothest, heaviest mid lane continuation roll on an asymmetrical ball, you're going to put the locator pin right in the bowler's thumb hole. It's going to look eh, something like this. Something like that. Okay? You're going to put the PSA in the thumb hole. This is going to give you a reaction similar to what you used to get with a symmetrical ball with the locator pin in it. It's going to spin where a symmetrical ball spins, but because of the stronger PSA, this ball is going to read the pattern and continue harder. So this is going to be a stronger ball. The weakest PSA is always a symmetrical ball because the PSA is in the thumb. Your next PSA location is taking an asymmetrical ball and drilling it with the PSA in the thumb. So we've talked about PSA locations. We've talked about the symmetrical ball because PSA is always going to be in the thumb since we're no longer going to be using balance holes. The next one was a symmetrical ball with the PSA in the thumb hole. That's going to be stronger then the, the asymmetrical ball is going to be stronger than the symmetrical ball. Now, if we want to get into a little harder read, we want to move the PSA to the right of the thumb hole for a right-hander. So when you're looking at a layout like this, for a right-hander with the PSA right of the thumb, that's going to get the ball to read the lane a little bit sooner, a little bit firmer, it's going to be harder to throw it through the break point. So, symmetrical ball, PSA in the thumb, asymmetrical ball, PSA in the thumb, and then an asymmetrical ball with the PSA just to the right of the thumb hole for a right-hander. We've talked about three layouts. Now let's talk about getting the ball that reads the lane the hardest and is hardest to throw through the break point. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to put the PSA on the VAL. That's going to make the ball harder to go through the break point. So the layout's going to look like this. We're 
when you want to make sure you can't throw the ball through the break point and you want to get the firmest read to the oil pattern. Okay? PSA over there on the VAL. So asymmetrical balls are more versatile than symmetrical balls because you can move the PSA around. You're going to get the softest reaction with the PSA in the thumb. You're going to get the medium reaction with the PSA between the thumb hole and the VAL. And you're going to get the ball that reads the pattern the best with the PSA on the VAL. So PSAs are significantly important to the, to the layout and to the ball reaction you're going to get out of asymmetricals. Learn to use these three PSA locations and you can do anything you need to do with an asymmetrical ball. Symmetrical balls are still good but because they only spin on the thumb hole you're going to get a weaker reaction than you do from your asym with its softest location. So there are one, two, three four different reactions based on the ball that you're choosing. Okay, pin to PAP distances and VAL angles also contribute to the motion. You'll find our drilling instructions and recommendations are in the boxes of all of our balls. We do put down the intermediate and total diffs of the drill ball and we also put down the type of motion you're going to get. So layouts are significantly important. Now that we don't have balance holes, Layouts become increasingly more important. So that's my tech tip for the day.